Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Sunday Morning Shred. Sunday Morning Shred is back. We're gonna try to keep doing these every single Sunday for you guys, so it's probably been a year or so since I've even done an episode of this show. And if you don't know what this is, this is the show where you wake up on Sunday morning, go to YouTube, get your coffee, get whatever you like going in the morning, sit down and you watch some guitar talk. So today we got some cool stuff for you. We got some cool guitars I found on eBay and Reverb that are currently for sale. Some of them are super expensive, some of them aren't, but it's cool ones that I found this week that I want to show you guys because I thought they're awesome. And then I got a bunch of questions that you guys submitted to me. So we'll be going into that. Um, I want to welcome you guys to the new channel as well. This is the new video up on Guitar Guts 2. So I want to encourage you guys to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button for sure. And this channel is going to be reserved more for the vlog videos, Sunday morning shred, like the, uh, you know, the LTD series we just did and the swirl dipping and like my top five videos and all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to have a place where I could play those videos, but not really put a bunch of, you know, put too many videos up on the main Guitar Guts channel because I want that one to be more highly produced content like trash to thrash or how to's and demonstrations and product reviews. So this will be where kind of the more raw fun stuff lives and that's going to be a little more serious and produced, I guess. So trash to thrash is back. Season four is back and we'll also be showing you guys a bunch of behind the scenes stuff on this channel here too. So if you guys like this stuff, be sure to subscribe to this channel right now. And this week on trash to thrash, we're going to have a killer one. It's going to be an LTD guitar. I want to give you guys a little bit of background information because I know most people don't watch this channel or this show compared to Trash to Thrash. And I wanted to give you guys a little bit of incentive, a little bit of uh, inside knowledge since you guys are like the, the cool ones who want to be there for everything. So this week on the show, it's going to be an LTD. It's going to be a crackle paint job, gold Floyd Rose, Seymour Duncan pickup. We got a kill switch, reverse headstock, 24 frets. This thing's a beast. It's almost done. I'm probably gonna be finishing it up today, possibly tomorrow, and recording the episode this week for you guys. So it's gonna be really good. Um, let's get into some of the guitars. I found a few awesome guitars over on eBay and Reverb this week. And yeah, let's check out that first one. Okay, so this one, this is cool. I've actually never seen this guitar before. This is a Jackson Dave Mustaine rounded corner flying V, similar to like a, Gibson Flying V or the old ESP Flying Vs. And I don't know, this thing is super cool. Never seen one like it, it's string through. It's got a kind of a weird headstock, not my favorite, but that body shape, man. If you threw a Floyd Rose on that, that would be like perfect. EMG pickups, I think the guy said it originally came with some Seymour Duncan pickups, but he switched it over to some EMGs and black. Yeah, look at that, I don't know about that headstock. Not my favorite. What do you think, Ryan? Yeah, it's definitely different. I don't know. The shop assistant, my boy Ryan's here, and he's gonna be helping me out with some of these videos so we can pump out more content to you guys. Yeah, cool guitar. Uh, neck through, string through, made in USA. It's got the Schaller tuners on it. Comes with the original hard shell case. And what are we looking at on price on this thing? So $7,500 plus shipping. That is insane. What's the description? So these were made between 2000, uh, this is a 2001 actually, it says, Jackson Y2KV, Dave Mustaine Signature in Metallic Black Pearl. It says uh, maybe less than 300 of these were actually made. Oh, so no, that's why I haven't seen them. It says this one's from his personal vault, the owner. The original Seymour Duncan pickups were swapped out for an EMG 8185 set. And he doesn't have the original pickups anymore, but it's an awesome guitar, mahogany. Um, let's see, it doesn't say scale length, but I'm gonna guess it's full scale length. Yeah, sweet guitar. Leave your comments down below. Have you seen this guitar before? Would you play this guitar? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Let's see the, what's the next one. This caught my eye. I've never seen a Charvel acoustic guitar before. Charvel Jackson acoustic. The price said 250 bucks. Looks like it's an older one. Look at that, made in Korea, one of my favorite places that guitars can be made. And it's from when uh, Music Corp owned Fender. Looks like it's in not the best condition. I don't know, Music Corp might still be the ones who own Fender, or maybe Fender owns Fender outright now, but either way, very cool, rare seeming. And for someone who's a diehard Charvel fan, made in Korea guitar like that, 
$250? If I didn't have an acoustic that I already really liked, I would be looking into this one. Pretty much no description on it, but interesting. It's got the single cutaway on it and yeah, 250 bucks, 125 for shipping though. So I don't know, interesting though. All right, so this next one here, I got on a Gibson Flying V kick after I saw that Dave Mustaine guitar. And this is a 1985 Gibson Flying V in white that is faded. It looks awesome. It says it has gold hardware, but it doesn't look like gold hardware to me. So when we take a little closer look, yeah, that looks like chrome. But it's got that classic Gibson V shape. And then we have rounded corners. It has like a very rounded headstock. It's a little different than the one I have. I have a Gibson Flying V as well. But yeah, I love this, uh, you know, rear routed Gibson Flying V look. It does have the two pneumatic bridge. Some of these had Kalers in them, which I think is super awesome. I love, you know, tremolos. I love Floyd Roses. And so to have a floating bridge or semi floating bridge on one of these things, something that's, uh, you know, gives you a lot of movement and a lot of tremolo action is really cool. But yeah, look at this thing. It's, I love to see something like uh, Grover tuners. I love seeing something like this that's so old. It's, you know, over 30 years old and it's just classic, you know, it's got that Hetfield coloring on the Flying V and all original basically. Really cool guitar. The next one's another Gibson Flying V, a very similar guitar. This is a 1985 um, Gibson Flying V. I didn't think this was the original color at first, but the description here says, this Flying V is all 100% original down to every screw. It has low hours and is in great shape beautiful light checking throughout so that means that the paint is starting to show some some old age few minor dings and normal signs of use but overall it's beautiful shape and the horns don't have any chips or dings either so um, mahogany body of course ebony fretboard um, and black hardware so let's check this thing out a little bit closer again it's a rear routed guitar so there's no pick guard on top but this one does have the Kaler, which I think is so cool. I love the Kaler bridges on these. I'm about to do a modification for a customer and he sent in almost this exact same guitar to have the Kaler removed and a uh, tunematic put on it. And yeah, look at the locking nut of the headstock. I, I love these ones. I think there's something so cool about no pick guard and a floating bridge on a Gibson Flying V. You just don't see that too often. And nowadays they don't really make ones like this anymore. Everything they make nowadays is Tunematic for the most part. So yeah, you could he here you can see the aging on the neck and yeah, that looks legit. That is crazy. A couple little dings. Comes with the hard shell case. Three grand plus shipping. So not cheap. It is in the United States though. That's pretty cool. I want to see what else these people have for sale. This is a pretty cool guitar. Sometimes when you find a seller like this, they might have other really cool vintage stuff. So here they do have a bunch of vintage stuff, but so far I'm not really, oh, this pedal looks cool. So this is a 1975 Electro Harmonics Octave Multiplexer. Look at that thing, it's a tank. That is, that is cool. But, you know, other than that, I don't really see anything else here that's too interesting to me. So let's get to the next guitar. Ah, these are cool. So it's a Gibson Gothic Flying V, the real deal Gibson model. I think these things are really cool. I remember when they came out and I've worked on quite a few Epiphones, but I've never got to work on a Gibson version. I've never owned any of them myself. It's got the Crescent Moon at the 12th fret, as opposed to the Epiphones, which have the, the Roman numeral. And I love the way that just they're so blacked out. Look at the black neck, the black body, the black headstock with the Gibson wear. It's got that weird, the old insignia of the, uh, I think that might be one of the people who started Gibson. And I love the way that Gibson's age. The paint that they use on these guitars doesn't chip away like a normal guitar. It kind of just wears away and, and it does chip off, but it's, I don't know, it's really cool. And then we have the inspection checklist. So pretty cool guitar here. That's uh. How much was this one? So this one's 1800. Not bad, not bad. Then, you know, if you're looking at, for something like that, then I found this one. So this is an Epiphone version of the same guitar, $650, less than half price, and very cool guitar. It's not quite as cool as the Gibson. This one's a string through model. 
and um, it's got that weird rubber rest on the bottom, which is a little strange. It's like a 50s flying V thing. But yeah, this one was cool too. It's got a little deformation here on the pick guard. That could be fixed. It's not strung up. But yeah, this thing's cool. Again, Grover tuners. They put Grover on almost everything now, it seems like, at Gibson. It's got some damage here at the where the neck meets the body. Comes with the hard shell case though. Man, that is a cool guitar. $650. It's a 2003 model. It's got an upgraded tusk nut. Yeah, cool guitar. And then check this thing out. So I'm a huge fan of Edwards guitars. I own a few Edwards guitars. I actually own the Star model, which this is, but mine's a little different than this one. This one is really cool. The paint job is insane. This thing is like, I don't like the headstock. What is that? Um, the body is awesome. The paint job's awesome. Not a fan of that headstock. I know Eddie played that headstock on a couple of his guitars, including the Star, I'm pretty sure, um, that he played, but not a fan of it. That's a great paint job, though. Look at that. It's excellent striping for the Tiger striping. Great burst. It looks good on that body style. I've been thinking if I ever want to modify my Edward Star, it's black right now. Would I want to paint it something like this? There's something so cool about all black, though. So for now, I haven't found anything that is driving me to uh, change it. I just saw something weird. Yeah, look at the tuners on this. <laughs> they, they bought tuners for um, ones that would go all on a standard, you know, on the left side of the headstock, like a Fender Stratocaster, like a standard headstock. But the ones on the bottom side should be reversed, so they have upside down tuners on the treble side of the headstock. That is weird. Why is it like that? And then as I was looking at this guitar, something else popped up. Look at this thing. That caught my eye right there. What is this thing? New handmade six string guitar body. So somebody made this thing and then they hand painted it. They did snake skin on the edges. Look how close the two bridge pieces are. The output jack is right. It's basically touching the knobs. Everything is completely crammed together. It's got snake skin on the edges there. Bizarre. So it's new handmade six string exotic rare pecky cypress solid body electric guitar snake skin trim. I have no idea what this thing is, but it is pretty unique, pretty bizarre. Looks like the pickups are mounted upside down or backwards. Hmm. Weird. The things you'll find on Reverb. Um, and then this is the last one. So this is an LTD, a Korean model, the MV200. Very rare. Comes with Seymour Duncan pickups in the case as shown in the pictures. Case is in good condition for its age, slight crack. From where the neck bolts to the body, very rare guitar as this was only made for about two years. I've come across these once in a while. And actually I've been watching this one for a while. This one did sell. And I was thinking about buying it for a rebuild, but I've got so many guitars here already. But I've never, you know, you don't see these come up. So I, I like to get my hands on every model. So I've been grabbing up weird Jacksons and LTDs from the 90s and early 2000s to rebuild and then flip and it's it's so, there's something about collecting them all even though i'm not going to keep them there's the crack it's not horrible but not good not horrible though it's repairable that's not the original case either whatever that case is is a little weird a little ugly so interesting guitar there like i said all those guitars except for that last one are up for sale right now on ebay and reverb i'm not the one selling any of them so um just free advertisement for the people who are selling them and now let's get into the questions. So on my Instagram, I asked you guys for some questions. You guys came through as always. And let's get to the first one. Will we see any bases in season four of Trash to Thrash? Unfortunately, no. I just work on whatever is sent into me. And sometimes I do custom shop builds that I just commission on my own. They're, they're non-commissioned by customers, I should say. And I'll just buy whatever guitar I want, put whatever parts I want on it, and then I'll sell it. Um, but... I don't personally really play bass, so I don't buy basses to rebuild. Anybody who wants to send one in and have me upgrade it, you know, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com, but 
No, there's no bases are going to be on season four. I'm not opposed to it. It's just I work on what's sent in usually. Will you be doing any BC riches or deans anytime soon? Man, same thing with the BC riches. I, I've actually written out quite a bit of estimates for people for BC riches, but nobody's actually sent one in. So if you guys want to restore your BC rich, get some crackle paint on it, do something really cool and custom, send me an email, let me know. But um, as far as deans, that's a different story. I have, th I think, three deans here right now. Customer guitars and some that I bought. And um, I think it's two customers and one of mine. I'm looking around the room because I have guitars hanging all over the place. It probably looks weird, but we have three uh, dime bag guitars going right now. And I know I have at least one more Dean coming in that's not a dime bag. It's like a more standardized Dean. So yeah, you're going to see some. And I believe, let's see, you're gonna we're going to have one of them on season four of Trash to Thrash. So later, eh, a couple months or so, I'd say, it's gonna that episode is going to air. Any chance we might see some custom graphic work from you? Loving the content. Well, thank you. Probably um, right now I you know I don't do airbrushing really and I'm learning but it's a long road to learn a new skill like that so eventually I definitely want to learn to do some airbrushing but I'm really interested in learning about wraps I don't know what you guys feel about guitar wraps you know um, it's like a, a vinyl wrap that you put on and I think you use heat or something I'm not really sure I've never done it but the work I'm seeing coming out from people putting wraps on guitars look amazing so. I'm curious. I've never been interested in wraps until now. Now that I'm starting to see people doing them and they look so good, like you can get a, a wrap of like the Kirk Hammett Mummy or like the Dean Lightning, the Dean from Hell. So there's like all these really cool paint jobs that would have been so hard to replicate, but you can buy kits online. From what I hear, they feel really nicely, you know, really smooth and good on the guitar. So let me know in the comments what do you guys think about wraps on guitars? I've been skeptical forever, but I've never actually done one, and I'm curious. Might be trying one eventually. What tips do you have for filling the neck pickup cavity? Well, I'm glad you asked, because this coming week on Trash to Thrash, we did exactly that. There's actually two guitars this season, season four of Trash to Thrash, that we filled in the neck pickup. So if you want to watch exactly how we do it, go watch this week's episode coming up this Thursday on the main channel for Guitar Guts. Um, we filled in a neck pickup on a really cool LTD. I'm actually looking at the guitar. It's right there. It looks awesome. And then we have another LTD that was right there. It got moved. So um, be on the lookout. Watch this season of Trash to Thrash and you're going to see plenty of tips for filling neck pickup cavities because it is not easy. It's tricky. How do you route for a Floyd? Again, that one's really tricky. I'm not going to be able to just explain it right here. I'd have to be showing you. And I have done that. So I'm going to link down in the description below to an episode of Trash to Thrash where we did this exact thing. I took a guitar that was, um, what did it have on it? I forget exactly, it might have had a Kaler bridge on it and we converted it to a Floyd Rose. So we filled in the old bridge holes, remeasured, put the new Floyd Rose in there and it's all in one of the episodes. Pretty much step by step exactly how to do it. So I'll link that episode in the description below. All right, what's the favorite guitar in your collection? I got a few people ask me this question and it's gotta be my Red Edwards. The thing's a monster. It's hard to say because I have a lot of guitars I really like and I have about 20 guitars, but that one's 27 frets. It's got the quilted maple top. It has an ebony fretboard with amazing mother of pearl and abalone inlays along the whole fretboard. It's a neck through with like a five, a five piece neck, seven piece neck, something crazy amazing guitar so I can't recommend Edwards enough it's my favorite brand I own a few of them I actually own two of this model but the red one that I own specifically is my favorite I've had that one for over 10 years probably closer to 15 years and yeah that's the one if I had to sell them all that's the one I'd keep until the end what's your favorite band it's got to be Metallica anybody who's been watching me long enough and seen all the old Metallica covers I've actually covered almost every single Metallica song back through Instagram over the last six or seven years. So Metallica's number one, but let's make it a little more interesting. Let's go with like the Mount Rushmore for me. So Metallica's number one. We got Pink Floyd. You can't you can't go wrong with Pink Floyd. They could be interchangeable. Every time I listen to Pink Floyd, I just start to melt away. So Metallica, Pink Floyd, we got Between the Buried and Me, which is like a progressive metal they have all these interesting time signatures and techniques and very amazing band. I love that kind of stuff. And we'd wrap it up with Dream Theater. 
that's kind of a combination of all those bands put together. They're progressive, they get soft like like uh, Pink Floyd, they're heavy like Metallica, they get super technical like Between the Buried and Me, so that's my four favorite bands. You still take retro game systems in exchange of work? Yeah, yeah, I do trade in. So if you want to get your guitar rebuilt by me and you want to ship your guitar in and have me refinish it or do all this work, I do trade-ins to make it easier. So I also offer payment plans. You can give me 50% down and then pay the remaining 50% while I'm rebuilding the guitar, which usually takes a few months, so you got plenty of time to make payments. But I also started taking in trade-ins. So if people have old guitars that they think I might be interested in, maybe some parts, you know, EMG pickups, or Floyd Roses, it's gotta be in good condition so I can reuse it. Um, but I'll take in trade-ins and give you credit towards your build. I also started taking in video game stuff. So I'm a huge collector of video game stuff. As many of you know, I have a whole nother channel dedicated to that. It's Guitar Guts Gaming. And I'm a video game freak. I love Sega Genesis and Sega Master System, Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo. All the older stuff is like my real favorite stuff, but I have the, you know, the newer Xboxes and PS4 and the newer systems too. But yeah, I take in people's old video game stuff that they don't want anymore, and some of it I add to my collection. Some of it I throw up in my eBay store to recoup the cost of rebuilding their guitar. So if you have old game stuff around and you want to trade it in, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com. Let's talk. Would you consider reviewing subscribers' bands like mine, Doom Machine? <laughs> What's up, Ryan? Nice little plug there for your band. Yeah, man, totally. I, I want to start doing something like this. If any of you guys watching out there are in a band or you have a friend who's in a good band and you want to help promote them, have them send me an email. I want to put together kind of a battle of the band. So maybe an episode here on Sunday Morning Shred, I'll play three to five bands. I don't know, something. I haven't really thought it all the way through. Let me know in the comments if this sounds cool to you and if you'd be interested in watching something like this go down. But maybe play a few bands, have you guys vote which one's your favorite, then do another episode a month later, a couple weeks later, I don't really know. Put another set of bands together and then all the winners eventually put those together and then do something special. Give them a prize. Whoever wins the, the big tournament would get some type of special prize. You know, they'd get a lot of promotion from being on here. Maybe I'd have them on the channel. Maybe I'd customize a guitar for the guitar player. I don't really know yet, but I am uh, starting to try to figure out how I can work with more artists like that. So if you're in a band, like I said, send me an email, put something in the subject line like Sunday Morning Shred or something about your band and we'll start talking. Sponsor me? Very nice try. Actually, I would consider that. So if you have some type of mutual benefit you can offer me because I'm a small business here, basically a one man operation. I have my shop assistant, Ryan, who helps me with certain things, but for the most part, I'm a one man shop here. So for me to build a guitar for somebody, it's going to come out of pocket. I have a family, I have a couple kids and you know, I can't be just building guitars for people. But if you can offer some type of mutual benefit to me, like if you have a lot of followers on social media, you're in a touring band and you can help get me business. I can help get you promotion, help get you gear. And we can create some type of symbiotic relationship, kind of like Venom and Eddie Brock, hopefully a little more healthy than them. But you, you get what I'm saying. Um, if you are looking for a sponsorship or looking to get your guitar fixed up, you know, like I said, it's gotta be a mutual benefit. I can't just do them for anybody. I would love to. And if I'm ever rich one day, I'm probably gonna just rebuild guitars for people and just choose who is gonna get them for free. That's what, that would be my dream one day to take all my favorite Instagrammers that I like to watch regularly and my favorite YouTubers and build them custom guitars that are decked out and themed just for them. I think that would be so cool. So one day you may see me sponsoring. Actually, I am working with somebody right now. We're coming up with uh, what we want to do because I've never sponsored anybody before, but I have a friend who's a YouTuber and he's a guitar player and he, he's starting to grow quite a bit and he asked me if I would like to do something like that and I said you know I would be willing to do something like this like um, I don't know if we would create like an artist signature model for him or like create like a set of mods that can be applied to any guitar white flying V versus black flying V black worst mistake you've made while fixing a guitar to be honest I haven't made any like terrible terrible mistakes most things on a guitar is are fixable. If you make a mistake, you can, you know, painting, you can sand it off, repaint it again, make a mistake wiring something. Normally you can just desolder and rewire it, but there are certain things I've done over the years. So when I first started, I used to have a ghetto paint booth in my garage here that had like plastic sheets, 
plastic, like, um, like a roll of plastic, you know, like painters use to cover windows when they're painting your house. That was wrapped around it, and I thought, you know, that would keep the paint in there, but the whole room would still smell like paint, this whole garage, for like a day. It would seep into the house, it was horrible. One time I was walking out of the paint booth, and it had like, you know, the, um, the roll of plastic actually stuck to the guitar as the guitar was wet, and then it, the, I dropped the guitar. I couldn't believe it. Dropped the guitar, fresh painted, put a big old chip on the bottom. It was one of the early Wolfgangs that I had done a couple years ago, and that was heartbreaking. But again, I all I did was sand it down. It wasn't like a didn't break in half or anything crazy. I put a little bondo on it, repainted it, and we we're good to go. So no big deal. Um, another time, I was adjusting a truss rod, and it was a it was actually a really cheap guitar, like a one hundred dollar or less guitar that somebody had sent in to me, and the truss rod snapped. It was a guitar that the person had owned for years, and I felt so bad. But you know, when these cheap guitars, it was lower than a Squire. There's not much you can do about that kind of stuff. I know how to adjust a truss rod, but man, I felt so bad. All right, now this is the last question. If you could make custom guitars for James and Kirk, what would you build? Andrew, that is a good one. <sighs> okay, so for James Hetfield, he's got multiple signature shapes. He's got the snake bite, the flying V, um, the vulture. He plays Les Paul sometimes. But if I'm gonna build James a guitar, it's got to be a guitar that, that I would want too. So we're going to go with the Explorer. The Explorer is my favorite body shape that he uses. We're going to start off with an, one of his old 80s ESP Explorers. Strip that finish off it, of course. We're going to throw uh, we're gonna throw Stealth Splatter on it. So he's going to be playing a flat black with gloss black splatter Explorer. I like the way this is coming together already. Of course, we're going to throw in a black kill switch. Um, I mean, I don't want to change up his pickups too much or his tuners, but I think that's what we do. Something like that is kind of have like the kill them all blood splatter. It'd be a little more modern and stealthy. Might have to get some diamond plate somewhere on this thing. But yes, a, a six splatter explorer for James. And then for Kirk, he plays like the super strat style most of the time. So I think we'd stick with that. Although the Rhodes is very tempting. But here's what I'm thinking for Kirk. We take one of his KH2 signature models, hexonify it. So we're gonna make it into a hex and chop off that lower horn. Um, we're, okay, so a crackle, like a pink to purple burst crackle. I'm actually looking at a guitar that's pink to purple burst with black crackle on it. I, I would love to show you guys, but it's the guitar that's gonna be debuting this week on Trash to Thrash. So I don't wanna blow it and give you guys a spoiler. But yeah, that's what it would have to be because Kirk is known for playing purple guitars, purple sparkle, those kinds of things. So maybe what we would do is have the, the crackle go down on the guitar, then have one of his artists come in and do like a ghost image of the mummy, like his mummy guitar, or maybe throw some like Ouija printing over the crackle. It's hacksonified. We of course throw the purple LED kill switch on there. And then I'm gonna change things up for Kirk. You know, I'm gonna let him have his bone breaker pickups. We're gonna paint the logos purple so it matches the guitar. But instead of a Floyd Rose bridge, because I know he loves his Floyd Roses and his dive bombs, we're gonna throw a Goto bridge on there because the 1996T is one of the best bridges I've ever used. I love those things. I've been using them on quite a bit of my builds. And I need to put one on one of my personal guitars now that I'm thinking about it. I don't actually own a guitar that has one, so. I just got a shipment of them. I might have to put one on there, but I think that's what it'd be for Kirk Hammett. Throw, throw a, a Goto bridge on there, a kill switch for him, crackle paint, the hacks in. Maybe we would even throw splatter over all that at the end once it's done with the graphic painted onto. So, Andrew, that was an awesome question. Thank you. Let me know in the comments what you guys would want to see me build for James and Kirk. Both of them. I would like to know that because I'm probably missing something huge here. But yeah, so that's it guys. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. This is the new Guitar Guts 2 channel. I'm going to be having at least a Sunday morning shred every week. Probably, a, you know, I'm going to try to do two videos a week on this channel. It's less produced content, but it's a lot of fun. I like doing Sunday morning shred. I like doing the vlog videos, the swirl dipping. We got part two coming soon for the swirl dipping. We got part four to the Explorer LTD saga. So. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Make sure you tune in Thursday, this Thursday, on the main Guitar Gets channel for Trash to Thrash. It's coming back. And I have a third channel, the Retro Gaming channel. Be sure to subscribe to that thing too. 
come back soon because there's going to be a lot of content coming up on here. So thank you guys, and I will see you soon. Rock on, my friends.